magic, actually. And I like now to continue with all of you because these are the some points where both of us struggle and think a lot. And I tell you, Jesse and myself, we have been thinking hard how to work with all of you now to pull out the knowledge of our brains, all the precious brains in the room, and to bring it somehow on paper to get a bit more input. And you find on your chair, you find a balloon and you find a pen. So take the balloon and uh, maybe we need to explain how to blow a balloon because the two of us, when we were in the office, I said, blow the balloon. And Jesse said, I don't know. In China, we have no children parties. And, <laughs> and you need to show me how to blow a balloon. Yes. So maybe some people need some help. But you can just uh, pull the plastic a bit. And then blow. I 
wrote watches, I wrote mountains and chocolate, and Jesse also wrote the Great Wall and food. <laughs> You can fill the balloon, you can write so many things on the balloon. Look at Mantas, he has already many things on his balloon. So many famous philosophers. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like China, Jesse wrote, Chinese people are not punctual at all. I wrote the Swiss are very punctual. Actually, in daily work, the two of us function like this. She's always punctual. I'm very unpunctual. So very often we discuss about national cliches and we think borders and we think in differences. But borders are the worst invention ever made by politicians. This is the wording of the European Commissioner, President Jean-Claude Juncker, just recently at a 
anti-nationhood speech at Alpbach in Austria. This was in the newspapers, widely spread in the newspapers, also in China Daily, I read at that time. So now let's start to think beyond borders. This is what we need for the future and therefore you find behind your seat, you find a needle. Look behind your seat, look behind your seat, you find a needle. And you destroy the balloon and you bring here the balloon, you put the balloon in here and then you get that global thinker password. This is sponsored by IBM. Thank you very much to IBM. You get the global thinker password when you put your balloon there.
So you are now going to invent the systems, balance systems, and in this balancing, we have always the two, like Chinese, yin and yang. We say sharing or protecting or giving or taking or centralized or federalistic or export or import. You can do many exercises with this. It's all around this yin and yang. Actually, this, uh, the, this sentence we also have it in China. It's a very old saying that what you don't want, you don't give to others. <coughs> so this is in every religion. It's in Islam, it's in the so-called primitive religions, it's in Christian, in Jewish belief, it's everywhere. So let's also take this rule now, not a technological rule, into the game. And we divide into groups. So you see the chocolate here, the front. Um, there are groups. And you draft such a balanced system. You invent what is in the 35 year plan and we give it a face. We give it a plan. We give it a structure. We give it maybe a house. And we create a house on the charts you see here in the room everywhere. So the first group is to create a global basic science center enabling excellence. What does a future Nobel Prize winner need? Maybe there are a lot of researchers, basic researchers, like in a pyramid. On top there will be a future Nobel Prize winner, but you need therefore many other basic things. A lot of researchers having the spirit, providing the environment to really do cutting edge not incremental research. So just think now, who would like to go into this workshop, number one? Number one would be the chocolate over here. Number one, you take a chocolate and you go the, to the chart, number one, this is here. So a global basic science center and you start with your group to draft such a global science center. But you take the leaflets here you take the leaflets from your booklet, you take one leaflet, you write something on it, your ideas, and you first collect all the ideas, and together you organize, and afterwards put it on the piece of paper and try to not have double things or put double things on each other, and create such a house of basic science. Second group is the Global Innovation Center stimulating applied research. So industry and academia together. How should it be? How should it look like? What do you need? Do you need a special area, a restaurant where they meet the industry guys? Maybe you need a wellness area or you need an airport, I don't know. Just be really inventive and a bit crazy. So group number two is here, is the brown chocolate. If you are interested in this topic, you come to the brown chocolate and you go to the leaflet, I think over there, group number two. And then number three is the innovation city with a global outreach. So not just Beijing and Shanghai, but also other cities all around the globe should be cities with an outreach to become an uh, innovation city and don't just think outreach outside. There should be the city itself, also in Europe, be innovative and have uh, different payment modalities, have different technologies, implemented um, ambient assistant living and so on. We want to see it, give it the face, draft it on your piece of paper, on your thinker's passport, put it on the paper and give it a sort order. Draft the plan. Then number four, we have here number three, very good chocolate. Then number four, an entrepreneurial spirit center for talent enhancement. And don't think just about adults and entrepreneurs and everybody wants to get rich. Actually, entrepreneur is not getting rich, I know. It's uh, uh, working um, um, double as much and earning half of it, that's entrepreneurship, to be honest. But how about the children? How do you educate them to become an entrepreneur or just of 
entrepreneurial spirit. So create schools, create and breed this entrepreneurial spirit. This is group number four. It's here, it's the red chocolate and find also the leaflet, it's over there. And then it's support, supportive public administration office. So we have the red belt, is that true? In the 13th uh, uh, five year plan we have the red, red tape. The red tape, yes. So there should be no administrative burden or pain in the neck by the administrators. The administrators should facilitate cooperation and also um, providing funding, etc. So create an office of uh, innovative, supportive administrators. Who is working in the administration sector? So if you're there and you have some kind of ideas, then you come to group number five. It's the blue chocolate and you find the leaflet over there. And then it's the Global Research and Innovation Fund with ideal research innovation programs. So there is always the saying we are short of funding and also from the Chinese side we have no matching funding. So create a global fund and think about the programs we need ideal for to do innovative research all around the globe. Draft something crazy. I'm very, very curious to see uh, what, with what you're coming up. And then is the global platform for innovation, communication that makes ideas flow. We have grids, we have networks, but how about the communication and information exchange on a constant basis? We're working in social networks, we are having a lot of technologies and don't miss to think about artificial intelligence and uh, virtual reality and so on. There is no border, so think the future in workshop number seven. This is the black chocolate, dark chocolate, very healthy. And six is the um, white chocolate. So just choose the chocolate you like or the workshop you like. Mm. And then go to the groups and start to discuss. We give you um, half an hour, actually, half an hour to discuss within the groups and now be aware there is a prize for the best group. You can get a prize and first when you draft everything you put the smileys, you have smileys, six smileys every group. You put the smileys at the idea or on the idea which you, your group likes best. Just put the smileys where you think, oh, this should be implemented, this, this would be great. Me as an administrator having such a Google kind of cafeteria or something. <laughs> if you like it, then put the smileys. Half an hour, ready, steady, go. Let's say. 2013 is tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> okay, 2050. Yeah, 2050. See, 2050. Of course, there's a, there's a need for IP. But I think sometimes we forget. It. <laughs> I think we must have topic wise uh, tax refunds and so on about health. Enough for that is. Mm -hmm. But no, all the signs yeah. and money is not things like uh, VR or I mean okay VR is already here now but it's going to be even more in the future and whatever is existing so we are talking about uh, one problem mm -hmm. and it could be a very difficult one and maybe you're sick or something else that if we are that research should be composed of representatives that are scientific and technical social science communities to your personal contacts so this is a uh, <laughs> Data protection. So that's why in Germany people are not always in favor of having one global. Um,
call it elevator pitch. It comes from the US where we have skyscrapers. We now also have skyscrapers in Shanghai and of course Beijing. But it was invented in the US where you have skyscrapers and you go from the top level where your hotel room is to the ground floor to a conference and you present your business idea to an investor you meet in the elevator. So usually you have only 30 seconds to step in an elevator and uh, tell these guys what you are going to do. Uh, but I give you one minute. So one minute elevator pitch for every project we have here now. And um, I measure the time. Just one minute. And you will hear the music after one minute. And I ask first group number one, Global Basic Science Center, to present their work and to sell their work. <laughs> So we had a big discussion at the start about the nature of research and how it's actually down to individuals, it's down to individual personalities and how important it is for everyone to get on. So most of today we've been talking about quite high level concepts. So the um, topics, we've, we've, we've spent a quite a wide range of topics, but they're mainly kind of to do with the conditions of the individual. So making sure that the working conditions are good. Do we have decent salaries? Do we have uh, pensions? Do we have decent career paths? Um, looking at, um, because individuals all think very differently, are the funding schemes which are available to everybody, if you're looking at individual disciplines, multi-disciplines, um, um, looking at gender equality, we're giving that one a double check because the guys in our team want to talk at that point. Uh, <laughs> uh, creating, also creating spaces for researchers to meet each other, like today. Today's quite an unusual uh, event in that we have Europeans and Chinese who are talking together about cooperation. Thank you very much. So, but, uh, thank, thank you very much. We give the microphone group number two, the rapporteur of Global Innovation Center Stimulating Applied Science. You need to be very attentive, listen carefully because you need this information afterwards. But, Okay, listen to the elevator pitch of group number two. Ready, steady, go. So basically what we wanted to do, we, what's really important for us was to include the common people. So we want to uh, use a bottom-up approach to find research topics for companies and for the science together to um, basically uh, yeah, address problems that exist in the world not only in developed countries and leading world economies, but in all over the world. And we want to do that by incorporating uh, personnel, scientific personnel, company, ma company managers, and also basic staff of companies to work together from all different kind of areas, countries, continents, to in different locations, like uh, one center for one technological area, another one for another technological area, and to share experience and further improve innovations. <laughs> Thank you very much for this presentation. Keep in mind group number two, and now we give the microphone to group number three. It's Innovation City with the global outreach. Wow, we want to hear that. So, we okay. give you also one minute. I tell you, ready, steady, go when you're there. I say, ready, steady, go. You need every second to sell your project. So, ready, steady, go. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, as you know, uh, since we talk about the future, we try to follow the paradigm of the ancient years. And as clairvoyants, we try to be blind in order to give the one oracle for the future. So we try to find things that have not been heard. So, an uh, innovation city with global outreach should be eco-friendly, a forest-embedded city, 
in, a, in many aspects, and for research and for a level of uh, quality of living. Uh, it should promote social interaction without media, not on the Twitter or the LinkedIn or whatever social media, but it should uh, promote social inclusion in cafeterias, in uh, streets, in buses, everywhere. It should have open education models like uh, the uh, top universities do in uh, the USA, in the UK, and a lot of coming up. Infrastructure for uh, should uh, be there, airports, uh, buses, trains, and the harbor, so it should be close to the uh, I want to say one more thing, <laughs> because it is the best. Uh, that a city should not be too big, neither too small. And cities cannot be planned, they simply happen. Thank you very much. Thank you for this presentation. We listened to uh, the group number four, Entrepreneurial Spirit Center. Oh, I saw that graph. This is going to be quite interesting. Nonetheless, reporting on the Entrepreneurial Spirit Center. Ready, steady, go. Well, we didn't want to, to focus on today, so we get a big time uh, plan until 2013. We wanted to be, keep something organic that it would change through the timeline. So, in start operating now, but it will be also changing until 2030. So it's a virtual world like Minecraft. So all the young kids could be inside this virtual world, change this, this virtual world, build uh, the innovations, the virtual innovations, find funding, real or virtual. They can also uh, speak with investors and take themselves. They can test their ideas, but also the big uh, is the open-mindedness. Everything will be anonymous. Nobody will know if there is a man or a woman or if it's a cyborg or even if it's a whole community behind or even if it's a computer if we go far to 2030. So we are talking about a connected world with, uh, yeah, with people that can be inside and uh, do innovations, change it, and uh, you can also put some squeeze uh, stuff and people have to work together and solve these things or business ideas. Sounds very interesting and beyond the state of the art. So, a virtual entrepreneurial world. And uh, we give the microphone to group number five, supporting the public administration office. Oh. Um, so, Francisca, you report, uh, and I say, ready, steady, go. Yes, um, our supported public administration office will be global, so it will be uh, uh, responsible for everyone in the world. Most of the thi uh, things will be done uh, via e-governance, so you will actually never really see this house that we've painted. Um, that means all the certificates that you need, all the documents to, to, to get a certificate or um, some sort of application can be already submitted online, and most of the communication will be online. Um, the uh, people working there, the administration, will be using social media for information, but also for you, um, it is a way to communicate. So you can use your WeChat in order to um, contact somebody uh, if you have some information on patent application. Um, most of all, it's a one-stop shop, so um, you have one entrance with a front desk, and then you have very short ways to the different departments, um, because um, everything will be short, uh, you already have uh, uh, made all the appointments online. Um, you never really have to leave the first floor because everything is already processed online, so there's not much need for space. In the second floor, you have an advisory board that meets with uh, a mix of uh, the society and the uh, people working in, in the administration, and decision-making processes are um, equally um, yeah, re represented so that you can have also an influence on the processes and the other decision-making. Thank you very much, Francisca, for this report, the process for the demonstration, and we give now the microphone to the Global R&I Fund with ideal R&I programs. So what kind of programs, funding programs, do we need for a global innovation society? Well, the floor is yours. Ready, steady, go. Yes, people are creating a long-term and sustainable global fund or which funds global initiatives on global challenges. We discuss the modalities, the funding, and the quality issues. Funding would be provided uh, like uh, crowd funds or stock exchange that you can buy shares on the, the results of the projects, like IPR, but you can also buy shares of the carrying out research. The modality of working we discussed or mentioned the media model like World Bank model. These global funds should also address 
uh, issues of uh, young students, uh, mobility issues, postdocs, young talent talents, and of course equality issue, peer review process, and so on and so on. And basically, once again, it should be a global fund, funding global initiatives on global challenges. Thank you. So the concrete concept that we came uh, up with is a virtual makerspace that draws inspiration from the, the norms and the methods of the open, uh, open source communities around the world. Uh, we want to create an environment where people can like share and take value very easily and uh, we also want to give it like a use technology to allow people from different uh, places to overcome uh, cultural differences and, and language uh, difficulties and so on. So the main pitch here is that we have this automatic team creation system and this is actually something that some of you might think about. Using an algorithm that like, like analyzes your skills and your skill set and everything to put you into an optimal size group to create something and it doesn't have to be anything special. You will just find that out when you meet the people that you want to work with in the virtual makerspace. Thank you very much. So you see, within just these ideas, we already find business innovation and some new business models, maybe not just for the public or why the public to pay, but also business opportunities. And now you got the green bullet points. I put green bullet points according to the size of your room, somewhere where you work. Everybody has such a green bullet point home. Okay. So now you walk around in the room and you can give the ideas and you have also the smileys of the group where the group already put their preference or idea they prefer. They have it on the leaf, but you just walk around, you read a bit through and you put bullet points for the ideas you like best on the sheets of paper. Read, put one bullet point. Now the rule is, you're not allowed to put any bullet point on the leaflet of the group you were a part of. <laughs> Rule number two is... Rule number two is... Um, don't put a single bullet point on your own system, but put a maximum of two bullet points on one system. Still a maximum of two. Hmm? On, um, uh, ch ch sorry, not one system, just one issue on a system. We will calculate afterwards all the bullet points, the green bullet points, and then we will see who is the winner, today's winner, and they get a prize. So you get now just 10 minutes to walk around. It's quite uh, short the time. Walk around and put the bullet points. And please, there is also fair play. That's a very important thing. Fair play in international cooperation. Huh? Fair play. Thirty-nine. 
sometimes because we are living in an aging population. So the question now is, what will your contribution be? Write down your favorite duty. I will. So you think now, or you take your thinker passport and you just write on one leaflet. I give you just three minutes. Therefore, you write something for yourself, a take-home message. What your contribution could be for a future innovation society on a global scale. What will your contribution, your tiny little thing to a whole global thing be? I will. Just write it down and please put this little, little somewhere in a book, in your pocket, in your purse. From time to time you look at it. Maybe, this is what I'm doing, usually I put it in the bookshelf and sometimes the leaflet fall out of the books after 10 years. And I look at the leaflets and I read what I have written 10 years ago and I say, it all happened. <laughs> so you write down now what you say, I will, and you don't need to share it with anybody. And be ambitious, that's also what we have in the 13th five-year plan. You need to go for the moon. Even if you miss it, you may land among the stars. But if you're not ambitious, then you land somewhere there. So be ambitious, draft an idea, I will. Just some of three minutes to write down something. For some of you, I have uh, a little, uh, just a, a little package of some hard gemstones. They're coming from all over the world. Just little shiny stones. This is an eye of the tiger. And if you want, you can take one of these and maybe you become an entrepreneur, I don't know, maybe you become a very innovative administrator, contributing to a whole together. And you can take just a gemstone, a little one, and put it in your pocket. And as soon as this happens, when you start to just do it and it happens, then you can throw this stone into a river or you put it in, a, I don't know, your plants at home in the earth because it's done and you can go for the next venture. So I just put the little package here, I leave it here. The ones who want just to take such a little stone, you take it again into your purse or something and just do it, just make it happen. You should not underestimate your own will and power as a single human being. When everybody is on the way in the same direction, then we will do it together. We will make China and Europe very strong in the future. And um, we now want to thank the Dragon Star partners for the organization. And I just ask them to come here. Please just ask, just come here, the Dragon Star partners, please.
is not just Chinese tradition, it's also modern architecture done also by European architects and it's railways also done by European architects. So let's innovation happen together and go hand in hand in the future. I thank you very much and I wish you all the best for your future and our future. Thank you for your